Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today I'm sitting in a coffee shop. A coffee shop. Now this coffee shop is part of a much larger superstore where you can buy everything from groceries to household products. Shops which sell everything are generally referred to superstores, but this one is not a big superstore with many floors. It's only two floors, and I'm sitting upstairs in the coffee shop, which has a little kind of balcony or gallery looking down onto the first floor or the ground floor as we call it in British English. In British English, the ground floor is the one on the ground. However, in American English, that would be referred to as the first floor. Now, on this balcony, which is fairly large, because it's large and overlooking the first floor, it's referred to as a gallery. It's also referred to as a mezzanine, which is taken from the Italian word. Some British people do try to pronounce the Italian word correctly, which has a harder Z sound, mezzanin, for example. But most of us who don't speak Italian just refer to it as the mezzanin, and it's the mezzanin in American English. Now, this area is rather comfortable. It has a nice floor and some nicely decorated tables and chairs. It has a very strange note on the counter of uh, the shop, the counter where you get served. It says, would all customers please remember that the tables are self-cleaning? Now, for me, That means that the tables clean themselves and I don't have to do anything. But it seems that's not the message they're trying to convey because on the table I'm sitting at, the message is quite different. It says, could all customers please return trays to the tray rack? Thank you. So when they say the tables are self-cleaning, they're trying to give the message that we have to tidy up after ourselves. It's not like the tables somehow do it, which was my initial thought. Now, this area in this little mezzanine or gallery, as we say, has a beautiful tiled ceiling. Uh, There's some Italian photos on the wall Uh, which hints at the history of this coffee shop because uh, it's not owned, I think, by the the, the main part of the supermarket. And it's quite nice. It has a kind of a brown colour, which is very peaceful. It looks very barren because I'm the only person sitting here and its uh, main advertisement is for cream tea, which is a very old English thing. And I wouldn't have thought many people here would be terribly interested in it, to be honest. It's a little bit odd. It says, fancy a cream tea? And then it shows a hamburger in the ad. I have no idea why they would do that. Um, Anyway, beyond where I'm sitting, they're selling luggage and umbrellas. And I've already chosen my umbrella Uh, to buy because uh, there's a terrible storm outside and my last umbrella blew away and broke. It was something like Mary Poppins. I almost uh, was taken away with it. So I'm buying a new one. Uh, Let's see now, what else can I tell you? Well, overking balcony, the shop is empty. It's one of these open plan stores and all of the shelves are corrugated metal and the ceiling of the actual store not where i'm sitting because i'm in a nice kind of alcove or balcony area 
but I can look beyond and see the ceiling of the main store and it's just corrugated iron. It doesn't look very nice and there's light and signs hanging from it. It's kind of like in the style of these American warehouses. Now, I don't think anybody likes these kinds of designs, but as usual, we just follow America. America takes the lead. It's not about comfort, it's about how much stuff they can get in. And also, I suppose, it's to get you in and out as quickly as you possibly can. They don't really want you to be hanging around and feeling comfortable. Despite the coffee shop, which is here, uh, and obviously items that we do need to buy, there's very much a feeling of, here's your hat, what's your hurry? That's a proverb we use in English, which basically means, well, uh, stay with us, stay with us, enjoy yourself, here's your coat, see you, bye. Here's your hat, what's your hurry? And if I remember the face of the woman in this coffee shop, she certainly wasn't amused at having to serve me, and she was even less amused when she had to explain what was on the menu. This shop is very, very white, and the only colorful thing about it is the very large fire exit signs. And of course, like a lot of UK places, there's also references, pointers, and signs towards the bathrooms. We have bathrooms for every conceivable type of person, disabled, male, female, other. I can see the large glass grey doors and the road outside. The car park is looking a little bit empty today and they're clearly building. I can see uh, building materials on the opposite end of the car park. People moving with hoods on their jackets all wrapped up for winter but at the same time, uh, having said all of that, there is a great sense of barrenness. We are recovering from a storm, and there's another storm forecast for tonight. As I mentioned in yesterday's podcast, I don't know what happened to the, the British spirit, that stoic attitude of keep calm and carry on. Because these days, they've announced even 24 hours in advance that trains, planes and buses simply won't be running. I remember when I was much younger, you were expected to walk over mountains and hills to get to work if you couldn't catch a train or a bus. If you didn't arrive, they thought you were somehow weak and you just didn't get paid or at least disciplined. However, companies close now at the far sign of bad weather or they just tell you to work at home. And of course, before the internet came, we couldn't work at home. There was a real need to try to get to work, but that's all gone now. So <clears throat> for smaller companies, I'm not sure how they survive. Looking beyond where I'm sitting, uh, there is a kind of like a metal barrier uh, in this mezzanine. I know that Italians will be horrified with that pronunciation, uh, which stretches all the way along from this coffee shop uh, along uh, to the other end of the store. And it's like a little gallery and of course, it has quite a high barrier so that if anyone feels like jumping over, they wouldn't be able to. Having said that, though, there are still spaces which children could easily squeeze through. So I would be a little bit worried to let children wander around the store 
on their own. Everything here feels and looks a little bit American. We've all seen the ads for American supermarkets in the middle of nowhere. You drive to them and everything is stacked high towards the ceiling. When I buy my cat foods in this store for my little kitty, I can't reach the cat foods and I'm fairly tall and I have to ask one of them to help me. And uh, that's usually quite a big deal because they have to go and get ladders to climb up to get me the food, which um, is not easy because finding someone to assist you anywhere here is always a little bit hard. I can hear people opening boxes somewhere, which um, shows that there's somebody around. And I'm also looking now and seeing a few people hovering around the soft drinks department. The one thing I really do like about this store is that it doesn't sell alcohol. And as you probably know, English people, British people in general, we have a very strange relationship with alcohol. We drink it like lemonade. Nobody cares and everybody is in denial about how much we drink. We can drink on public transport and I've been actively trying to push the government by signing petitions to try to change that. I mean, surely they must know that we all have a problem with alcohol. So why allow us to drink it in public? The government paused drinking on public transport during COVID. And this was kind of a big deal for them. And it was only in Scotland, everywhere else in the UK, you can still buy alcohol on the train and on the bus. And now they're poised to bring it back. Poised means on the brink, about to bring alcohol back on public transport. I think that's a really, really crazy idea. And I know that some of you would be horrified by that. Because I don't drive, I use public transport a lot. And it basically means that I'm simply unable to use public transport on Saturday evenings or on uh, other evenings like Friday nights, because there's a good chance I'll find myself amongst a group of very, very loud drunk people. Ticket inspectors and bus drivers, they turn a blind eye to people who are drunk because if they try to question or to say anything to them or about them, then these people could become very violent very quickly. The only people who enforce this are the police and strangely, of course, they disappear on Friday evenings and Saturday evenings. So it's very much a free for all on these days. I haven't drank for many years and I'm very glad about that because it allows me to see just exactly where we are with this alcohol situation. And it's not just about the alcohol, it's also about the behaviors which are passed down from generation to generation of really hard, hard drinkers. But it's not a topic you can easily have with people here. If you ask anyone about how much they drink, they'll immediately tell you, oh, I, I don't. But then next thing you know, they're in the supermarkets buying lots of alcohol, or if you're in the pub, they'll be very open to having a drink and then you say, I thought you didn't drink. Well, of course, I don't drink a lot, will be the reply. So alcohol here is something which many people have a relationship with, which excludes them talking and mixing with other people because many of us drink alone because of the way our social structure works. So anyway, what I want to tell you is I'm very happy 
that the supermarket is one of the few, or the superstore, including fruit, is one of the few that doesn't sell alcohol. And I really hope that it stays that way. And now that coffee shops are on the rise, once again, people are socializing without alcohol, and more and more people are beginning to think about their health. That's a good thing. Well, that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.